So I recently got to try a medium format camera, this one, the Fuji GFX 100S, which has a sensor equipped with 100 megapixels. But that's not it. Fujifilm has also this feature called pixel shift that pretty much converts your 100 megapixels into 400 megapixels. The resulting photo is about 23,000 by 17,000 pixels compared to my Sony a7 III 6,000 by 4,000. Later on in the video, I'll show you some photo comparisons between the 100 megapixel photo and the one using pixel shift, the 400 megapixel version. The GFX 100 actually has a firmware now that lets you have the pixel shift feature. The GFX 100S, because it's a newer camera, it already comes with it. Anyway, so let's jump into pixel shift and how that works. So two things that you need to keep in mind for this is that your camera cannot move. It has to be on a tripod and your subject cannot move. So that really limits the usability of this pixel shift function. You wouldn't be able to shoot portraits with this either because it, with pixel shift, you're taking 16 photos and every tiny movement of the person is going to ruin that pixel shift function. So what the software is essentially doing is taking 16 photos and combining them. After taking each photo, the camera moves the sensor in a sequence of directions. And when it combines the 16 photos, the camera is actually putting together all that information between pixels that were able to be captured by shifting the sensor ever so slightly. So it actually shifts the sensor about half a pixel every time it takes a photo. It is because of this very micro movement that any movement in your frame or of the camera is going to ruin your pixel shift photo. So this really decreases the usability of this feature, but if you do a lot of static product shoots, or maybe you are in an art gallery and need to do preservation of artwork, this might be something to do if you wanna keep as much detail as possible from the artwork. So to activate this on the GFX 100S, you need to switch the camera to stills and then hit the drive button and select pixel shift. We then select the interval at which you want the photos to be taken. One thing I did was to make sure to not touch the camera at all, even when I was starting to take the photos in pixel shift mode. So what I did to avoid touching the camera at all while taking the photos for pixel shift was to just set it on timer. After to combine the photos, you need to combine them via software using Fujifilm's pixel shift converter. Once this is done, Fuji combines them all into a massive DNG file. So let's compare what the 102 megapixel raw image out of this camera looks like compared to the one created by the pixel shift function, which is roughly 400 megapixels. I have all of these images open in Photoshop. The 100 megapixel photo is roughly 130 megabytes in size, whereas the pixel shift image is about 1.8 gigabytes in size. So the file size is massive compared to the 100 megapixel file size, which is still very big compared to other raw images. So on the 100 and megapixel photo, you can see if I zoom in all the way to 100% in Photoshop, this is what I see. And the detail already is pretty, pretty insane when you look at it. And then if we open the navigator section here on the panel in Photoshop, we can see the part of the image that we are examining right now. And on this one, you can see, you can see all the small detail here at the top of the battery where it connects. You can see the text so sharp and clean. And now let's look at the 400 megapixel photo. If we zoom into 100% on this photo, this is the amount of zoom that we get. So compare the 100 megapixel one right here, we get that big section of the battery at 100%. And on the 400 megapixel one, it's pretty much contained to the top of the battery where it connects to the charger. And we compare these side by side, you can see that we see a lot more detail on the 400 megapixel pixel shift photo here on the text specifically here. You can see all this smudge, all the dust, all the, um, the different dirt particles on the battery as well. And if we zoom in a little closer, up to 300% on the pixel shift function. We can see we can still see a lot of detail actually on this battery. And we look at the text. Yeah, it's still very, very 
clean in my opinion, even at 300%. And this is at 700%. Things start to get pixelated at this point, but to be honest, I'm very impressed. You can still make out what the letters say, which is really impressive. You start to see it as well at about 1200 zoom. So I have these two side by side right here, 600% zoom on the 400 megapixel one and 1200% zoom on the 100 megapixel one gives me roughly the same size. So the pixel shift software, I think it does a very good job in combining all the data and all the information available to create this massive file. So now let's look at this photo of this lens that I have here of an old EFS lens at 50%. We see a lot of very clean detail, the numbers here, the focal lengths. We see the text in here, a lot of detail here on the body of the lens. Now let's zoom in on the 400 megapixel photo. Image stabilizer here, it's very, very detailed, very clean. Yeah, a lot of detail that is retained actually. You're able to zoom in really close and see all the small details on this lens. That little speck of dust, I think it is. It's very clear as well. And you get to see all the texture of the lens and these areas specifically. These tiny particles, the number five here, number three, the numbers are still very, very detailed. 300%. 400%, 500%, this is really crazy. And if you see here on the navigator panel on the top corner, you're able to see that we're zoomed in in a very small portion of the lens and we're still able to see quite a lot. That's insane. Zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, it's not until 1200 yet that you start to see the pixels you're able to preserve quite a lot of detail. And we can see these little things here on the letters that I didn't notice previously, actually. So let's take a look at the last image. All right, so let's first take a look at the 100 megapixel photograph. This is what it looks like. Let's zoom in. This is what it looks like at 50%. And at 100%, this is what it looks like. We see a lot of detail all of this textured surface in the lens cap. The text is very clean, very detailed, very sharp still. And we see, of course, a lot of dust. And we zoom in a little bit more, 300%. Let's see what that looks like here. The text is still very, very nice, very clean. 500%. Now let's take a look at the 400 megapixel photo. Zooming in at 50%, this is what we see. Very cool. Let's try 100%. Yeah, wow. All that detail, these lines over here, you get to see all the dust on the lens. The texture over here. You're able to even see the rich pattern here on the lens which is very cool. Let's see if we can see that on the 100 megapixel camera. That the ridges on the 100 megapixel photograph as well, you're able to see that a little bit more clearly on the 400 megapixel photograph. Let's zoom in a little bit more, 200%. You see the lines here even, really cool. 300%, 500%, it is really cool we're still able to make out detail on this, which is really insane. And if you go back to the navigator here on the top side, on the top corner, we are zoomed in in a really tiny spot of that photograph. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the pixel shift function. Is it useless? Is it worth it? Or is it just a gimmick? I would love to hear about it. So the usability of this is quite niche if you want to do very high quality product photos, or if you want to capture photos of artwork and capture as much detail as possible, this is what you would need this camera for. So that's it for today's video. I thought it would be a fun one to do and see what a 400 megapixel photo can do to your eyes. So anyway, so that's it for today's video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell. And if you're still watching, make sure to check out these videos next and I'll see you next time.